Hey guys, welcome back to Switch's Kerbal Space Program, where today we will be taking all the cadets off to Minmus, but first I would like to lay down some preparation for this upcoming dual mission. You'll see we have the contract there in the list of the contracts in the Mission Control Center, so let's go and lay ourselves down a transfer window timer. And over here we can see there are 26 days to this transfer window. We're not going to go into how this is a mistake. Um, okay, so what are we doing? As I say, today we are launching the cadets. Here is the ice cream van. Of course, we're off to Minmus with its beautiful ice cream laden slopes. So we need a van to take the boys out there and see what's going on. Uh, I find myself with Minmus almost in the exact correct position. So we are straight off with like no hesitation. You'll notice that we have picked up a little bit of a wobble to the vessel. And at the moment, it's not apparent why. But if you look at that side view there, oh my. Oh my, what a view. So, I think we're going to have to go back to the VAB and do some restrutting. So we're flying a lot straighter now, and it's time to quickly check up on all of the sets. Uh, I can safely report that all of them are panicking, apart from Matfa and Sheepley, who are going to be like my shining forces of this team, I've no doubt. I, I know Matford will be, as he is the single lone pup pilot in this vessel, whereas everyone else actually has a crew with them, a pilot an engineer and a scientist and I suppose at some point we're going to have to name these individual crews I mean we do have four we have the originals who have the name original oh whilst we're here did you notice that staging went horribly horribly wrong so I was supposed to throw away the side boosters instead I separated the main vessel from the lift mechanism it was horrible so launch number three and we should have most of the bugs in the system worked out well this is at least my plan uh, we've gone through like the lift stage and we've made sure that all the staging is now correct. You will see that the staging diagram on the left, I suppose it is a diagram, uh, has been completely reworked and everything is exactly where I want it. And indeed, we are now cutting through the atmosphere at such a rate that there is no way we are not going to make it. Which leads us with a very boring situation where we have to find things to talk about. But we were talking about the four different squads that we have. As I said, we had the original three, Jeb, Bob and Bill. Uh, then we have the understudies, Richmond, Riven and Frank. Obviously, these guys are the ones that have been with me the longest. I have the most respect for the things that they do. Uh, then Joba, Sigkas and Hadouki. I think that's how you pronounce those. They are the Kabolians. Much like if we were to leave our Earth, so we're not just Earth, Earth, Earthians, Earthicans, Earthlings, I believe is the correct term. But if we get to the point where we are, we uh, colonize the solar system, we're not going to be Earthlings. We're going to be maybe the Sunnians or the Solists. I know, like from the system of Sol, right? Uh, so these are the K Kerbolians from the system of Kerbal. Uh, and then we have the, the Astro Boys, Sheepley, Lars, and Landmon. And of course, Matt Foote is all on his own in Team Rocket. Go Team Rocket. Now, I'm not sure how many of you were paying attention to the map screen whilst that was up there and how many of you were just listening to the sound of my beautiful, melodious voice. But we've actually set up a whole load of manoeuvre nodes now to set us up to get to Minmus. Ideally, to the sunward side of Minmus. This is why, if you were paying attention, it looked a little bit weird. We went up and beyond the range of Minmus, came down on the other side, did a little bit of a manoeuvre node tweak to make sure it's all good. Um, and just setting up alarm clocks to make sure we hit all these. Of course, the Kerbal alarm clock is the most invaluable invaluable tool that I use here uh, nothing is anywhere near as useful maybe Kerbal attachment system when I end up putting something up without any parachutes I possibly sing its praises there but the Kerbal alarm clock is just so good for keeping track of everything in this game because this game is almost entirely about timing Timing is something that's thankfully Richmond Kerman. No, in fact, it's not even Richmond that's flying here. Matt Foot Kerman has actually nailed down during his training course. Uh, so we don't really have to worry about all this stuff here. Uh, we've made our transfer burn or transfer orbit up towards Minmus's uh, altitudes. And now all we've got to do is wait for this like drift of space to go through so that we can sort stuff out and get ourselves up in the appropriate place to make the final tweak just like so, as it so happens. Before we time warp on, make our way through the Minmon Sphere of Influence boundary and come in for a beautiful landing. So I've said it will happen and here we get to watch it actually happen. So we are inside the Sphere of Influence as described. Uh, Periapsis is a little way off the surface. Thankfully we're not on any sort of collision course, though that's saying that a collision course would have been workable. Uh, and we're just trying to make our way over the, the, the horizon of Minmus there so we can get onto the sunward side 
side because hey no one really likes landing in the dark or at least i don't like landing in the dark and i'm fairly sure my kerbals don't like landing in the dark anyway they would really love to put down on the on the sunward side if not for their sake if not for my sake then for your sake dear viewer so we can see what is going on so we are skimming down as low as possible as is a standard landing procedure and when the vessel reaches somewhere that i believe to be a good place to set down whether this be just getting beyond my periapsis or as is the case here feel like i'm going over the top of somewhere that is quite a a, a high point to, to land on uh, i go and just nullify my entire horizontal direction now i do this normally by using the nav ball using the retrograde markers when that's pointed directly upwards i know i've got rid of all my horizontal velocity but this time i used the Kerbal Engineer up on the top right there you can see it's got my altitude readout and my horizontal speed. When that was zero I just let myself fall down and then Matford brought us in for the final approach to put down gently on the surface of Minmus here before doing the final bit of um, station work and there's some fireworks. Isn't that great? Got rid of a fuel tank, be nice and efficient on our way back hopefully. Alright, so whilst we were landed on Minmus, I noticed that the uh, dual transfer alarm was getting rather low on its day count, and I had still not noticed the glaring error that I had perpetrated in setting that alarm. But I happened to have had this probe, the Kalanichi, served up for such an, uh, an event. This tiny vessel literally has power, solar, a communicatron and a temperature scanner on it. It is literally just to meet the requirements of the most basic of explore contracts just in case, as is now the case now, I would run out of time, I had less than a day to go, I just wanted to get this thing up into orbit so that I could at least fulfill the terms of the contract that I was going to take. Bearing in mind at this present moment in time, I haven't actually taken the contract, I am just preparing for said situation. Of course, the launching of a probe into an 80 to 100 kilometer orbit is starting to become a bit of a routine task now. Uh, just flying straight up, drop my staging, get my way up to about an 80 kilometer orbit, perform the circularization burn, marvel at my inability to make a lifting stage that actually is done by the time we're done in the atmosphere, and move on to go do some fun stuff with the Ker well, the Kerbal Cadets. Three and a half hours until the transfer window, and I am still absolutely oblivious, but it's time to start arranging people for PR. So we're gonna get everyone out into their squads. Of course, being up front are gonna be the understudies, Rich Mal in the middle, Riven on the right, uh, our right as we're looking face on and Frank on the left. We then need to get the Carbonauts out, uh, the Carbolians, sorry, Joe Bersig, Cass and H Hudukai, just to remind you of everybody's name. Uh, they seem to be coming out nicely. Everyone is getting into a, a nice formation. The one thing that doing the PR um, picture for the last mission to the moon for the moon pig actually taught me was to not have everyone lined up in chevrons what we need is that middle per middle group lined up in a chevron and then everyone else in kind of an, an angular diagonal line surrounding that central point just so that the camera has something to look at uh, and of course after Matford has a little bit of an emo moment just sat on the floor being sorry for himself he goes and stands on the ship for this beautiful view right here Amazing. Of course, one of the issues with that last PR shot was the fact that all the sun appears to be at the rear of my Kerbals, which wasn't really good. So I thought I'd be able to fix this with a Kerbal attachment system. My first major disappointment was finding out that I couldn't put solar panels on the floor of Minmus, just like you could on, say, an asteroid. Uh, but I thought this would be all right. We would make a, a hideous machine here out of a bit of light and a solar panel, just so we could end up like putting it down and putting it at all the Kerbals' face. Places. turns out that this also wouldn't work and if you look there there are there is no light coming out of that machine even when I try and turn it on using the system uh, I can tell you that if there was a battery in between the light and the solar panel that would have actually worked but I don't have any batteries on this vessel to uh, to cannibalize into using this system so time to put everyone away right so much like the moon pig we need to put everyone away individually but unlike the moon pig everyone has their own little uh, ladder that they can go and hold on to which makes things a whole lot simpler uh, you will remember the end of the moon pig episode there was quite a, a frustrating sequence of everyone trying to get back in through this same tiny hatch that was like totally at the wrong angle and you couldn't just hang on to a ladder and climb into it and it was quite hilarious well, today we will not be facing that issue, but one thing we will be facing is the fact that I've just found out that Kerbals can stand on top of each other. So you know what this means. 
Kerbal Tower. Well, at least that was as good as I could do. I was trying to add extra people in, but you'll see the whole thing just fell apart there for no reason. So I decided to smash a Kerbal into it and have a bit of fun. So let's put everyone away. This time I'm just going to do it in a massive jump cut so we don't have to sit and watch me put each one of these guys away individually into their own little pods because oh, it, was, it was slow doing it, let alone trying to talk about it. As the creepy fairground music starts, we're going to spin around and make everyone dizzy as we just take off perfectly from the surface of Minmus. Thankfully, the slope was leaning in the direction that I actually needed my vessel to be going off eastwards, uh, mainly because I'm trying to get my vessel, as you can see from this mucking around with the manoeuvre nodes, to be exiting the Minmus, Minman... Um, system sphere of influence area uh retrograde from the minmus itself so we are trying to head backwards there at as, as high a rate as we can possibly go i don't want to go too overboard because with the inclination of minmus it may ends up that we uh start making our orbit go a little bit squiffy on the angles we saw a sunset and a sunrise there and we're just trying to make our way out of the sphere of influence with as little interruption as possible but here we have the dual transfer and i finally noticed that it wasn't a kerbin dual transfer it was a moho dual transfer which has made me a very sad kerbinaut indeed i thought i would be going off to dual to make a big final dual mission and get everything sorted and fine and it's not okay so we wasted all our power whilst trying to get this vessel out of the sphere of influence so matt Foots had to come out and push things around and we will continue our sound tirade about our lost opportunities to go to jewel it really was quite annoying i've gone through and checked all my all my encounters now including this tight close encounter to the moon uh, which was a, just a little bit of a bonus there. I thought that'd be great. It also gave us a hell of a gravity assist to bring us down with even less fuel usage. So that was great. Yeah, so I've gone through and checked all my encounter windows now. And it turns out that everything is now sorted. And we have literally about a year to wait before we can do anything more useful. So the cadets are sorted. I'm a little bit gutted that we're also missing a curb into Eve transfer. If you see at the top there, we've got four hours. And we're not going to get back in four hours. And we need the cadets to go to Eve. Even with like the zero um, build time yeah bit zero construction time in this game just everything is conspired to mean that we can't go to Eve this time we're gonna have to wait over a year to go again indeed it is a year 253 days which is nearly two years in the Kerbal system yeah much vexing much vexing but let's talk about things that are going well look how close we are coming down to the space center so we're going to use all the remaining fuel especially the fuel that we saved with that moon tra uh, moon encounter to try and push ourselves closer towards the space center i don't think it's going to go incredibly well but it does leave me with another issue that i'm thinking about now this vessel as you may have noticed is quite tall it's in fact sort of what four times taller than most things that we uh, regularly count uh, crash into the ocean so i have a worry that this thing is going to land the back engines are going to fall in as opposed to the front engines yeah the back engines are going to fall into the water the parachute's going to disappear and i'm going to fall over and kill matford and probably the understudies so i've got to try and deal with that and my way of dealing with that is to try and put them down sideways uh, just like this uh, now as this is going to be the final thing that happens in this episode i'm going to say thank you very much for joining me right now and i will leave you with the suspense how will this happen will i save my people will i not well all we can do is really wait for this couple of hundred meters to tick down the parachutes are slow and everything went well i will see you next time when we're going to do some other things oh and by the way we've got all our crew up to level two now yes bye